Welcome back to DMV Sports Zone. Chased down by Beal in the corner for three, gets fouled and hits. Welcome to DC. What's good, DMV Sports Zone? This is Noah back with more fantasy football content, especially after that crazy game against the Baltimore Ravens. Let's talk about week three. It's going to be a good one. Summarize, as I mentioned last week, I'm also going to be including the Baltimore Ravens and the Washington football team in these fantasy football breakdowns. And with these juicy matchups, especially for the Ravens heading into this weekend, you're going to have a lot of relevant fantasy players. More importantly, a lot of players that I promise you will be on waivers. It's going to be interesting. Again, a lot, all my fantasy sports info is coming from Sport AI. We are counting down the weeks until the app launch where we are democratizing the fantasy sports analytics process. You want to learn more? Information in the bio. Without further ado, let's get started. So first things first, let's talk about the Washington football team and follow up a little bit on the comments that I made last week. You know, it aged very well. The sleeper pick was Dustin Hopkins, hit the game-winning kick. He lives to fight another day. I know he's been under a lot of media scrutiny for being pretty inconsistent, but he had a huge game from a fantasy sports and a real-world perspective last week. But we, we see some red flags from the team. First of all, Washington football defense is staying consistent, but consistently average. So what does that mean against a very high-powered Buffalo Bills defense? Uh, Buffalo Bills offense, excuse me. Unfortunately, it may be time to really start considering other defenses and maybe playing the cards a little bit better. So Washington football team defense... I have faith will turn around. However, they are no longer in the top 10 discussion as of now, especially against that Bills offense. So they're outside. They're in the top 20 amongst defenses. So unless you're in a very deep league, you need to pick up a different defense. Of course, don't drop the Washington football defense because their schedule upcoming will be a lot better. But they are not a start. I repeat, not a start this week. But you still want to keep them. They have a strong schedule ahead, and the turnaround is only a matter of time. These, this level of talent historically simply doesn't continue to struggle. They'll eventually turn it around, and you don't want to have them on waivers and risk losing them for their juicy matchups later in the season. As opposed, a good alternative is the Ravens defense. A lot of teams have been dropping the Ravens defense because of their struggles the past two weeks, but you have to remember they're playing an absolutely on fire Raiders Raiders offense week one, and then a Chiefs offense that frankly is next to unstoppable. So the sample size is extremely biased. You don't want to give in to the short term bias, and you want to pick up Baltimore Ravens defense, especially because they're playing the Detroit Lions. Yes, the Lions kind of made a comeback week one against the Niners, but the Ravens have not blown a 20-point lead in the past two seasons. So you can have faith they're not going to collapse, and they're a much stronger defense. I have them in the top 10 for Week 3. Just to wrap up for the Washington football team, again, you want to be careful about the Washington football team defense. Stash them, but I really recommend don't start. You want to find a more friendly defense like the Ravens or play the Lions. Dustin Hopkins is now a kicker that if you if you're struggling in a position, you can pick up. Especially against a Bills offense or a Bills defense, they may limit Taylor Heineke and the rest of that Washington football team offense. You want to have Hopkins as insurance because players like Gibson and McLaurin are must starts. Yes, Gibson hasn't gotten the touchdowns, but his numbers are strong and over time throughout the course of the season, they want to incorporate him more and more into the offense. Do not give in to the McKissick hype. I repeat, do not give in to the McKissick hype. 
He's a solid flex play if you're in a deep league, but Gibson is the running back one and will be a top 10 back again. Simply too talented and too much success despite the touchdowns to bench. You don't want to play anything too crazy. You want to just have faith in your best one or two running backs, and Gibson more than likely will be your running back two or running back one, depending on how deep your league is. McLaurin, obvious. Continue to start him. Continue to roll him out. He's slowly becoming matchup proof and quarterback proof. Success, success with multiple different quarterbacks. One of the safest plays you could possibly have. So, remember, McKissick had a good game, but you don't want to give him to the hype immediately. Hopkins is now a player you can pick up. The Washington football team, defense is a defense you might want to bench, and then McLaurin and Gibson must starts. In terms of the Baltimore Ravens, the situation is a lot different. So, obviously, Mark Andrews is a must-start tight end. He had a decent game by the lack of red zone touches. He still gets enough volume as a tight end to be very viable as a tight end one. So, you continue to roll him out. But, interestingly enough, the hype should not be around the running backs. Yes, Latavius Murray got a touchdown for the second straight game. Tycon Williams doing pretty well. But, they're really showing they're going to do a running back by committee. No running back is simply getting the volume to justify a start unless you're in a 14-team league where you can start at flex, maybe. But they are too risky. Very similar to the 49ers. A lot of people hesitate on them. They're running a running back by committee. So even though they're a heavy running team, there's no lead back. There's no J.K. Dobbins, for example, last year. Instead, you want to keep an eye out on Marquise Brown. Marquise Brown, I mean, you saw him last night becoming the number one receiver that a lot of people people had question marks about. You know, in a run-first offense, extremely undersized, people said, what do we make of Marquise Brown? But Marquise Brown has proven he's consistent and more importantly, matchup proof. Even against a tougher Chiefs defense and a run-first offense, he's, he gets the red zone looks that they're looking for. He's the deep threat. He plays most of the receiver targets and is now a must pickup. He's only owned in around 57 to 60% of leagues, you know, in ESPN, Sleeper, and Yahoo. So he's more than likely going to be there if you're an A-team or even a 12-team, must pick up. In terms of starting, he'll be a solid wide receiver two in a deep league, wide receiver three in a smaller league. But regardless... You can make a decision if you want to start him or not. He has a very good matchup against, against the Detroit Lions. In my opinion, he will finish in the top 25 of his position, which justifies a start in almost every single league, especially in PPR because he's getting the target and the volume. And then, of course, Lamar Jackson. What can I say? He's justified himself as a minimum QB2 in a 2QB fantasy league and a starter in a lot of deeper leagues. So the Baltimore Ravens fantasy future looks a lot better especially that defense, you want to start them, like I said before, over the Washington football team defense. They've been dropped, so they're going to be juicy opportunity to be on waivers, pick them up. They have a great matchup against the Lions. Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson, Marquise Brown, all must starts or stashes at minimum. you got Justin Tucker, it should be consistent. But Tyquan Williams, Latavius Murray, all the running backs, I personally think they're barely worth stashing. Because the running back committee will still happen. And you saw a lot of the rushing opportunities for touchdowns goes Lamar. Because, I mean, the talent is undeniable. And, they're kind of, and they use Latavius Murray and these running backs as a distraction. So, frankly, it's part of the game plan. Great for real-world Ravens football. Not great for fantasy. So, if you want to stash Murray and Tyron Williams, you can. But in terms of starting for week three, I would avoid them completely. So that's a quick rundown, you know, week three. So far, the you know, so far the both teams have had um, ups and ups and downs, but it's very, very early in the season. In terms of a fantasy perspective, watching a football team defense has been disappointing, but we've seen that Terry is matchup proof. Gibson is only a, a, t- a couple touchdowns away from being an elite fantasy running back, so he has to be a must start. Continue to be a must start, and interestingly enough, the kickers on both teams are viable options as well as Marquise Brown and Lamar Jackson. Again, this is Noah. Hope you enjoyed the week three video. 
Uh, I want to know your thoughts. Can you know, feel free to comment and have a discussion about who you think are fantasy viable in terms of the DMV's teams. And I will see you next week. Thank you.